e-commerce and e-business differ slightly, so let's take a look at defining e-commerce. E-business encompasses all the activities a company performs in selling and buying products and services using technologies. In broad terms, e-business includes several related activities, such as online shopping, salesforce automation, supply chain management, electronic payment systems, web advertising, and order management. E-commerce is buying and selling goods and services over the internet. E-business includes transactions that center on buying and selling goods and services to generate revenue. E-commerce builds on traditional commerce by adding the flexibility that networks offer to the availability of the internet. One way to examine e-commerce and its role in the business world is through value chain analysis. Michael Porter introduced the value chain concept in 1985. It consists of a series of activities designed to meet business needs by adding value or cost in each phase of the process. The internet can increase the speed and accuracy of communication between suppliers, distributors, and customers. E-commerce can enhance a value chain by offering new ways to reduce costs or improve operations. Although the goal of e-commerce and traditional commerce is the same, selling products and services to generate profit, they do it in quite different ways. The internet has improved productivity in many organizations, but this improvement must be converted to profitability. The following are the most widely used business models in e-commerce. The merchant model transfers the old retail model to the e-commerce world by using the medium of the internet. Using the brokerage model brings sellers and buyers together on the web and collects commissions on transactions between these parties. The advertising model is an extension of traditional advertising media such as radio and television. The mixed model refers to generating revenue from more than one source. E-commerce sites that use the infomediary model collect information on customers and businesses and then sell this information to other companies for marketing purposes. In the subscription model, e-commerce sites sell digital products or services to customers. E-commerce transactions occur among customers, businesses, and government, resulting in nine major categories. Business-to-customer, B2C companies such as Amazon, BarnesandNoble.com, and Overstock.com sell directly to customers. Business-to-business, B2B, e-commerce involves electronic transactions between businesses. Customer-to-customer, C2C e-commerce involves business transaction between users such as consumers that sell to other consumers via the internet. Consumer-to-business, C2B, e-commerce involves people selling products or services to businesses, such as when a consumer creates an online survey for companies to use. Many government and non-business organizations use e-commerce applications, including the Department of Defense, the Internal Revenue Service, and the Department of the Treasury. Universities are an example of non-business organizations that use e-commerce applications. For example, many universities use web technologies for online classes, registration, and grade reporting. Organizational or intra-business e-commerce involves e-commerce activities that take place inside an organization, typically via the organization's intranet. These e-commerce activities are not part of the nine major categories we just discussed. B2B e-commerce lowers production costs and improves accuracy. In addition, the information flow among business partners is improved by creating a direct online connection in the supply chain network, which reduces delivery time. There are three major models of B2B e-commerce based on who controls the marketplace. 
In the seller side model, sellers who cater to specialized markets such as chemicals, electronics, and auto components come together to create a common marketplace for buyers, a sort of one-stop shopping model. A popular application is e-procurement, which enables employees in an organization to order and receive supplies and services directly from suppliers. Large corporations such as General Electric or Boeing, as well as consortiums of large companies, use the buyer-side marketplace model. Here's how it works. A buyer or group of buyers opens an electronic marketplace and invites sellers to bid on announced products or make a request for a quotation on RFQ. By participating in buyer-side marketplaces, sellers can do the following. They can conduct sales transactions, automate an order management process, conduct post-sales analysis, automate the fulfillment function, and reduce order placement and delivery time. The third-party exchange marketplace model is not controlled by sellers or by buyers. Instead, it's controlled by a third party, and the marketplace generates revenue from the fees charged for matching buyers and sellers. A horizontal market concentrates on a specific function or business process and automates this function or process for different industries. The main objectives of trading partner agreements are to automate negotiation processes and enforce contracts between participating businesses. Using this model enables customers to submit via the internet electronic documents that previously required hard copies with signatures. Five major activities are involved in conducting B2C e-commerce. Information sharing. A B2C e-commerce company can use a wide variety of methods to share information with its customers, such as company websites, online catalogs, email, online advertisements, video conferencing, message boards, and news groups. Ordering. Customers can use electronic forms or email to order products from the B2C site. Customers have a variety of payment options such as credit cards, e-checks, and e-wallets. Fulfillment. Delivering products or services to customers varies depending on whether physical products like books, videos, or CDs, or digital products like software, music, or electronic documents are being delivered. Service and support are even more important in e-commerce than in traditional commerce, given that e-commerce companies do not have a physical location to help maintain current customers. Activities are the same in traditional commerce and probably occur in the same sequence as well. M-commerce is the use of handheld devices to conduct business transactions, such as making stock trades with an online brokerage firm. Supporting technologies for M-Commerce applications include wireless wide area networks, WWANS, and 3G and 4G networks, as well as short-range wireless communication technologies such as Wi-Fi, WiMAX, Bluetooth, and RFID. Many telecommunication companies offer web-ready cell phones. Other applications of M-Commerce include banking, traffic updates, tourism services, shopping, and video conferencing. While you can already use a mobile phone to access a website and order products, the next step is voice-based e-commerce, which relies on voice recognition and text-to-speech technologies that have improved dramatically in the past decade. Several voice protocols are already available, including Nuance, Internet Speech, and Google Voice. Electronic payment is a transaction in which money or script is exchanged only electronically. Credit cards, debit cards, charge cards, and smart cards are the most popular instruments for electronic payment transactions. A smart card is about the size of a credit card and contains an embedded microchip processor for storing important financial and personal information. E-cash, a secure and convenient alternative to bills and coins, complements credit, debit, and charge cards and adds convenience and control to everyday cash transactions. An e-check, the electronic version of a paper check, offers security, speed, and convenience for online transactions. 
e-wallets or virtual wallets, which are available for most handheld devices, offer secure, convenient, and portable tools for online shopping. You're probably familiar with PayPal, a popular online payment system used for many online auction sites. Micropayments are transactions on the web involving very small amounts of money. Web marketing uses the web and its supporting technologies to promote goods and services. Intelligent agents and push technology are also used as web marketing tools. Intelligent agents are an artificial intelligence application that can be used for web marketing. According to a recent survey, approximately 60% of internet access is through mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. Engine optimization, known as SEO, is a method for improving the volume or quality of traffic to a website. Users of these social networks influence the purchasing decisions of many customers by recommending certain products or services to their friends. Some social networks also provide a direct link that enables the users to buy products or services directly. Social media, by providing a community of people with similar interests, is all about insight and product discovery. For the purposes of this course, we define social commerce as a subset of e-commerce that's influenced by social networks and other online media enhanced by the ever-increasing power of smartphones. There are several categories of social networks and online media that collectively constitute social commerce. Users of social networking sites recommend a product or service to a friend, or the site offers a direct link for shopping, such as the Shop tab in Facebook or the Buy button in Twitter. Group buying platforms offer a product or service at a huge discount if a certain number of buyers agree to buy the product or service in a given time period, such as within 24 hours. Peer-to-peer e-commerce platforms are community-based marketplaces that enable individuals to communicate directly with each other and conduct e-commerce operations. Recommendation websites aggregate customers' opinions related to products or services that they have purchased and then recommend them to others with the same interests. Participatory e-commerce sites allow users to participate in the production process and bring a product or service to sites in a collaborative fashion. Social advice websites provide shopping advice and opinion through chat forums. User-curated shopping sites provide a platform for users to create actual products and or uh, generate listings of products that others can choose from. Hypersocial organizations are companies that leverage social media in order to turn the business into a social process. Hypersocial organizations share information through many different avenues. The most popular is direct social media interaction, such as Facebook posts, Twitter's pages, and Instagram. These organizations may also use blogs, videos on YouTube, and their own company websites. Social media is perceived by many people around the world as authentic. The complaints many customers post are viewed as accurate, even though some of them may in fact be fabricated. Problem-solving platforms such as YouTube's how-to videos are seen as reliable. To stay competitive, organizations need to rethink how they interact with this new interconnected world. The importance of members is probably the most vital element of this new reality. Finally, there is the transaction element. The more easily a community helps its members engage in a transaction, buy something, or discover information, the more likely they will be to tell others, which will increase membership. Social media has created a huge platform that customers can use to express opinions about a business, positive or negative. The four pillars of hypersociality describe a return to a natural human interaction for both businesses and consumers. They include 1. Tribe versus market segment, 2. Human-centric versus company-centric, 
three, information channels versus network channels, and four, social messiness versus process hierarchy. A growing number of organizations have adopted the hyper-social organization model. Social Media Information System, SMIS, includes all the components of other information systems. Three additional components of SMIS include Application Providers Social media sites such as Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Snapchat create features and functions for the app and make them available free to their users. Communities all the people, you and me, that use any of the social media applications. Sponsors, organizations and businesses that pay money to social media sites to advertise their products and services such as Walmart, Macy's, and Intel. SMIS play a major role in forecasting hyper-social organizations by creating communities to transform interactions with users, customers, employees, and business partners into a mutually productive relationship. Organizations' social media policies are available online, and they should be consulted before designing one in order to implement best practices.